FL Studio has loads of customization options. You can make it look just how you like. Do you want it like this or this? Like this or like this? Today we'll go through how to make these adjustments. If you just want to try some different looks, the easiest way is to try the presets. Go to Options and then Themes and click around. But there are more customization things that can be good to know about. Let's start in the playlist. Go to the drop down and then View. You can experiment a lot here, but we'll go through some useful ones. Like the grid color. I'll make it grey here. We can also configure the grid contrast. This is medium, and low, and high. Or even invert the grid if you want. There's also a view setting for what to see behind audio clips. Nothing, plain, cell, glass, aqua, solid, solid but more contrast. In the piano roll, let's go to drop down and view again. We can edit the grid color and grid contrast just like before. The rounded function makes your nose just slightly rounded. You can also edit the palette. Maybe you already know that you can change a note's color by clicking up here. The colors you get to choose from are not set in stone. If you go to view, note colors and edit palette, you get to change this. You can also mark a couple of notes and hit Alt C to recolor them all at once. The colors you set here will stick if you create your own theme. Let's set that up. Go back to themes here. We can adjust the colors, as well as setting colors for specific elements in FL Studio. Here are some before and afters. Selection, Highlight, Mute, Option, Steps, Meters, Text. The wave setting is a bit special. You can set different colors depending on the frequency range of a sound. You can make bass dark blue here. And let's make high frequencies white. As the sine wave gets bassier, it gets bluer. Cool, huh? For this to be visible, you need to have activated colorful waveforms in the general settings. Set it to color map. And now when we got our color set up, hit save preset and name it. If you go to the Themes folder within the FL Studio files, you can locate this file and send it to your friends. Here is the pathway. If you've downloaded a custom theme, that's also where to place it to install it. You can also download some themes directly within FL Studio. In the browser, go to Presets and then Themes. There are a few more settings that affect how FL Studio looks within the General tab. There's four different options for animations. This controls how much visual animation is shown in the user interface. Here are some examples. It doesn't really increase CPU load, it's more a matter of personal preference. Smoothing affects how motion looks within FL Studio. Minimum. Maximum. You can also toggle high visibility. This is useful if you have color or vision deficiencies, as it makes some switches and icons more clear. And you can turn thick lines on or off. You can also experiment with different icon layouts here in the toolbar. Right click a grey area and you can try a preset. Or press edit and choose for yourself what icons you want to be visible. Generally, most workspaces in FL Studio can be customized in some way. I like to keep my browser search bar at the top of the browser. There's a setting here. I also like the extra large view in the mixer. Choose one that works for you. In the mixer, we can also toggle this icon to enter the waveform view. So generally, going into the view options of a window is a good idea, if you want to customize something to fit your user experience. And you can always ask Gopher if you wonder about something specific. Good luck! And remember, if you don't own FL Studio yet, it comes with lifetime free updates. Bye!